Welcome to another episode of Practice Makes You Better where I'm covering all 14 categories doing a 30 question mock test to give you the best possible chance of passing your theory test first time. In this particular episode, I'm gonna tackle the category of alertness on my app of choice, Driving Test Success, which is what I use in the classroom and have most success with. In this particular category, it only has 26 questions. So I will be doing a 26 question mock test, giving you hints, tips, tricks along the way, visual clues where possible. So if you struggle with alertness, this video is for you. So keep watching until the end. So let's jump onto my iPad and let's get started with this 26 question mock test. What does this curved arrow road marking mean? Now, if you're using the Driving Test Success app, you can enlarge the image. And I always suggest read the question, look at the image, because sometimes there's clues in it, and then go to your four options. So in this case, they're talking about the curved arrow on the right-hand side. So it's facing to the left, but on the right-hand side. So let's go and see what options they gave us. The road ahead has a camber to the left, no. The road ahead bends to the left, no. Heavy vehicles should take the next road of the left to avoid weight limit, no. Overtaking traffic should move back to the left. So if you are overtaking in this situation because the lines on your side of the road are broken, you want to get back to the left as soon as it's safe to do so. That's what that is. What should you do when you're approaching traffic lights that have been green for some time. Right, if the lights have been green for some time, you've got to factor in that it may change to red. So that's what we're looking for. Probably slow down, be prepared to stop something along those lines. Maintain your speed, no. Brake hard, no. Accelerate hard, no. Be ready to stop, yes. Why should you switch your headlights on when it first starts to get dark. If the question comes up why you turn your lights on or why did so-and-so turn the lights on in the theory test, there's only one reason to see and to be seen. There's no other reason why you turn your lights on. If it's clear enough and weather's good, you should have your, the light should be switched off. So others can see you more easily. Yep, first one out. Because the street lights are lit, no. So that you blend in with other drivers, no. To make your dials easier to see, no. Where should you avoid overtaking? Now be careful with this. The question says, where should you avoid overtaking? When this comes up in the classroom, the pupils miss the avoid bit and it reads, where should you overtake? So the, let me just repeat that. Where should you avoid overtaking? In other words, where is it not safe for you to overtake? Approaching a dip in the road, yes. If you don't know what a dip in the road is, this bit where you're sort of coming over, the last thing you're gonna do is overtake on the dip and you don't know what's on the other side of it. In a one-way street, when they're talking about one-way street, they're talking about lanes, so you can overtake on a one-way street. Just after a bend, that means the road is straight, so you can overtake if it's safe to do so. And on a dual carriageway with lanes, obviously you can overtake on it again if it's safe to do so. What should you do before making a U-turn? Now, I'm not going to assume you know what a U-turn is. A U-turn is just literally making a turn in the road with your car. There's no stopping, so you're just literally doing it and it looks like a U. Now, if you go forwards, backwards and forwards again, that's classed as a three-point turn. So this question says, what should you do before making a U-turn? Now, before you do any turns, you should be checking your blind spot. As instructors, we call it blind spot. On the theory test, they normally say shoulder check. So we're looking for something along those lines. Select a higher gear than normal, no. Look over your shoulder for a final check, i.e. shoulder check, yes. Check road markings to see that U-turns are permitted. The theory test is always about safety. So they're gonna always put you in a safe situation to make a U-turn. Give an arm signal as well as using your indicators. There is no indication for a U-turn. There's only signals for left, right, and slowing down. So there's no signal you would give. That's why you do a shoulder check to make sure there's nobody there. If there's nobody there, you don't need to give a signal. There are objects hanging from your interior mirror. Why could this be a hazard? 
Um, if you've got stuff hanging from your rear, rear view mirror, it's blocking your view of the road, it's simple as that. Um, your radio reception may, might be affected, no. Your windscreen could mist up more easily, no. Your view could be obstructed. Let's, let's do that again clearly. Your view could be obstructed, in other words, you may not be able to see. Your sun visor might get tangled, no. When do windscreen pillars cause a serious obstructions to your view? Now, when this comes up in the classroom, pupils don't know what windscreen pillars are. Windscreen pillars are the, the things at the side of the car that keeps the windscreen in place. That's what they call windscreen pillars. So they're literally at the side of the car. So you've got your main windscreen and then obviously your door windscreen as well. So that's what windscreen pillars are. And they cause problems when you're on bends and junctions because obviously they're blocking your view when you're looking left and right so um when you're approaching a one-way street no because technically that's straight when you're approaching bends and junctions yes because you need to look left and right and they're there on your left or your right when you're driving on a motorway no because technically you're driving straight and when you're driving on a dual carriageway again a dual carriageway is a motorway but again you're driving straight you're driving your car, when may you use a handheld mobile phone? Right, there's two occasions where you can use a mobile phone. One, when you are parked up safely with the new highway code rules, you've got to take the key out of the ignition. So when you're parked up safely, but the key has to be out of the ignition. And the other one, when it's an emergency, you can use your phone while it's in motion, but it has to be in an emergency, i.e. something's full off your car on the motorway, for example, and it's unsafe to stop but that phone call has to go through to an emergency number either 999 or 112 so we're looking for either one of those options when your car has an automatic transmission no when you've parked safely that is probably going to be the answer and it's got safely in it as well i will add this in just in case you're new to my channel if it's got safe safety safely in the answer you have to shortlist it as a possible answer. It doesn't always work, but remember the theory is about safety. So if it's got safe in the answer, shortlist it as a possible, you can always change it. When you're receiving a call, no. When you're driving at less than 30 miles an hour, no. What should you do when you move off from behind a parked car? What should you do? So again, before moving off, um, you should be checking your blind spots, i.e. shoulder check. Use the exterior mirrors only, no. Look around before moving off, yep, that's your blind spots, looking around before moving off. Give a signal after moving off, it's no point signaling after you've moved and look around after moving off. And again, it's no point looking after you've moved, it's too late. You're waiting to turn right at the end of a road, so you're at a giveaway line. What should you do if your view is obstructed by parked vehicles? Now, the two options I can give you is use reflections or listen. So that's what we're looking for. Move quickly to where you can see, so you only block traffic from one direction. No, stop and then move forward slowly and carefully for a clear view. That's a possible. Wait for a pedestrian to let you know when it's safe for you to merge. No, and turn your vehicle around immediately and find another junction to use, no. So it's going to be stop and then move forward. Ideally stop, i.e. look for reflections, listen to see if you hear lorries, motorbikes coming down the road, and then move forward carefully for a better view, which is called peep and creep for those of you taking driving lessons. What does the term blind spot mean? I've mentioned that. Well, like I said, as instructors, we call it blind spot on the ferry test. They normally say shoulder check. Blind spot is just checking the area over your shoulder. So you're looking over your shoulder. It's the bits the mirrors do not pick up because the mirrors do not pick up everything. So you need to be doing a blind spot check. Massive part of the driving test, by the way. An area that's an area not visible to the driver. Yeah. An area not covered by your headlights. No, an area covered by your left hand mirror, no, and error covered by your right hand mirror, no. What should you do as you approach this bridge? So enlarge the image, remember, look at the image, taking information, so you've got a sign of a humped bridge, which is a triangle, oncoming vehicles in the middle of the road. Now, if you take a look at this, there's no pavement on the left. 
So you're now looking for possible pedestrians in the road, but it also says oncoming vehicles in the middle of the road. So now let's see which option they're going to give us. Change gear, no. Move to the right, no. Keep to 30 miles, no, no. Slow down. It's going to be slow. And when it's on the bend, like I said, it's got no pavement, so that the pedestrian could be walking on the road towards you. And obviously it says oncoming vehicles in the middle of the road. So that's what you should do. You're driving on a wet road, so the road is wet. What should you do if you have to stop your vehicle in an emergency? Now, in this situation, if you've got to stop your vehicle in an emergency, that means you're braking firmly, not sharply, by the way, braking firmly. It means all the weight's going to go to your front wheels. So you need to keep both hands on the steering wheel is what we're looking for, something along those lines. Give an arm signal, no. Apply the parking brake and foot brake together. You're never going to use handbrake and foot brake together while the car's in motion. Select reverse gear, no and keep both hands on the steering wheel. Yep, for safety and control, you're gonna keep both hands on the steering wheel. What should you do if you can't see clearly behind when reversing? Now, if you can't see behind when reversing, um, they give you two options. One is get out and check or ask someone to guide you. And when they say behind, they're talking from the boot down, not behind you directly. You're talking from the boot downwards. You're not going to see behind that no matter how much you look in that rear view mirror. Ask someone to guide you first one out. Open the window to look behind, no. Open the door to look behind, no. And look in the near side mirror, no. You're on a long motorway journey. What should you do if you start to feel sleepy? It's If it's on the motorway, it does say motorway. If it's on a motorway, what you want to do is come off at the next exit and go to a service station, get fresh air, rest, get something to eat, chill, whatever it happens to be. So that's what you're looking to do. Um, play some loud music, no. Stop on the hard shoulder for a rest, no. That's definitely a no. You should not be stopping on the hard shoulder unless it's an emergency. Feeling tired is not an emergency. Um, drive faster to complete your journey sooner, no. Leave a motorway and stop in a safe place. Again, it's got safe in the answer, so it's gonna be that one. Why should you use your mirrors when you see a hazard ahead? Right, the reason why you check your mirrors, and that's your hazard perception for those of you taking driving lessons, on the videos when you're clicking, that's you checking the mirrors if you was driving live. So you see a problem, check mirror. See a problem, check mirror. Because you want to know how your actions are going to affect the drivers behind. I normally say to my pupils, if you can't see it, if, you, if I don't see the problem, it can't tell the brain what to do. So if you don't know the car is really close behind you, the brain doesn't know it can't stop suddenly or it shouldn't stop suddenly. So that's what you want to be doing. To check what's happening on the road ahead, mirrors show you from behind, so it's not ahead. To assess how your actions will affect the traffic behind, yep, definitely. Because you'll need to brake sharply and stop. Nope, you're never going to brake sharply anyway. Because you'll need to accelerate out of danger, no. How can you make sure that a satellite navigation system, i.e. sat nav system, doesn't distract you when you're driving? But how can you make sure? That's the key, what they're saying. How can you make sure? Only set the destination when you're lost. That doesn't make sense. The whole reason for a set of is not to get lost. Choose a voice that you find calming. No. Set it before starting the journey. Yep, set it up before you start. So it's already done. Turn it off while you're driving in the built-up areas. Again, doesn't make sense. You're turning right onto a dual carriageway. What should you do before emerging? So again, so look at the image. So the silver car and the giveaway line is turning right where the van is. The first thing that drivers should do is check to see if the central reservation is wide enough for the car to fit, because that's going to determine what your next actions are. So stop, apply the parking brake, then select a low gear. No. Position your vehicle where to the left well to the left of the side of the road, no, because you're turning right. Make sure that you leave enough room for the vehicle behind, no. Check that the central reservation is wide enough for your vehicle, yes. You're waiting to emerge from a junction. The windscreen pillar, again, the windscreen pillar is restricting your view. What should you be particularly aware of? Now, this question, be careful with it. The key word there is what should you be particularly aware of? 
So motorcyclists, yes, because they're smaller and the pillar could be hiding it. Lorries, no. Coaches, no. Buses, no, because they're all large vehicles. So always going to be aware of cyclists and motorcyclists at junctions because of your door pillar. What should you do before slowing down or stopping your vehicle? So with this, um, it's similar to the question we had about two, three um, questions back when it's talking about why checking the mirrors. What you should do before slowing down, as I mentioned earlier on, is check your mirror has a perception. See a problem, check mirror. So you know how your actions are going to affect other road users or if the eyes don't see it, it can't tell the brain there's something going on behind. So flash the headlights, no. Use the mirrors, yes, for safety. Select a high gear, no. Sound the horn, no. What's most likely to, dis to distract you while you're driving? So let me just break that down again. What's most likely, that's the key. What's most likely, not what's going to distract you, what's most likely, because there's other things that can distract you, but there's some more than others. So using the windscreen wipers, no. Using the demister, no. That's the heaters in the car, by the way. They, just, they call it demisters, but that's um, the heaters in the car clearing the windscreen from or back, which again is also part of your show me, tell me for your driving test, for those of you taking driving lessons. Using a mobile phone, yeah, that's got to be the biggest distraction, because while you're talking, you're not focused on driving and using the mirrors, mirrors you should be using, um, so that's standard and that's not gonna distract you. What's likely to happen if you use a hands-free mobile, sorry, hands-free phone while driving? This is similar to the question we just had. It's just worded differently, spinning a different way. Again, I'm gonna say, like I always do in the videos, if you understand the question, you understand the answers, no matter how they spin it, which is a, this one's a prime example, it's exactly the same as the other question that we just had previously, you're gonna still pass the theory test. If you memorize the answers, you're now gonna be struggling when it's worded similar to this one. So let me just break it down again. What's likely to happen if you use a hands-free phone while you're driving, so you're gonna be distracted. So what's gonna happen if you're distracted? It will divert your attention, yeah. It will increase your concentration, no. It will reduce your view, no. It will improve your safety, definitely not. So it's gonna divert your attention because you're focused on the phone call, not focused on driving, and what may be happening in front of you, also behind you from the mirrors. Why are these yellow lines painted across the road? So they're talking about the yellow lines Right across the road, these are called rumble strips. So as your car drives over, the car rumbles. If you're driving slow enough, it's a smooth rumble. If you're driving too fast, it's a violent rumble, which means this alerts to you about your speed and approach to hazards normally. Um, to tell you the distance to the roundabout, no. To make you aware of your speed, yes. To help you keep the correct separation distance, no. To help you choose the correct lane, again, no. You're traveling along this road, how should you pass the cyclist? Again, take a look at it. With cyclists passing cyclists, regardless of what the road is, um, give them plenty of space, room, because cyclists swerve, just in case you didn't know why cyclists swerve, other than the obvious wind, they avoid drains and manhole covers because the wheels don't grip. So you need to give them a, enough space, the same space as a car, technically a meter, or a meter and a half now with the new highway code rules. Change down one gear before you pass, no. Leave them plenty of room as you pass, yes. Keep close to them as you pass, no. And sound your horn as you pass, no. You're following a large vehicle. Why should you stay a safe distance behind it? You'll keep out of the wind better, no. You'll give the driver a chance to see you in the mirror. That's a possible, because there is a saying, if you can't see my wing mirrors, I can't see you. So if you drive behind something large, always hold back. Ideally, see the, see the wing mirrors that way, it opens up the view of the road as well for you, so you can see why they may be slowing down. You'll be able to corner more quickly, no. You'll help the large vehicle to stop more easily, no. What should you do if your mobile phone rings while you're driving or riding? Um, personally, just let it ring and go to voicemail if you've got a voicemail. But 
Let's see what option they're giving giving us. Um, answer it immediately. No, stop immediately. That suggests stopping immediately. Like you stopping straight away. Um, so it may not be safe to do that. So be careful with the word and that because that can sound like it's correct. But because it's got stop immediately, that suggests it's literally immediate. There's no safety factor in, um, involved in that. Leave it until you have stopped in a safe place. Again, it's got the word safe on that. That's the safest option. And pull up at the nearest curb. No. So there you have it. Alertness is one of the easier categories. All it is designed to do is make you aware of the safe stuff you need to do and keeping you alert once you pass your driving test. If you haven't already, come and join us in our community on Discord where you can start to be like-minded students, ask any questions, post the screenshots or questions that you may be struggling with. I will leave the invite in the description below and as a pinned comment. If you got value from this video, like, comment, definitely subscribe and share it with your friends so they have the best possible chance of passing their fairy test first time. YouTube's going to show you a video here. I'm going to show you a video here. Go off and watch which one's relevant to you and also catch you in the next video.